today we are going to prove as scientifically as I can whether or not the OM-1 is the coolest camera that Olympus has ever made. Now when I say cool, I'm talking temperature here, not, you know, whether or not you got your baseball hat on backwards. And it's OM systems, OM systems, I'm never going to get used to this. So this is going to be the first of a bunch of different videos that I'm going to do about the new OM-1 and how it performs in astrophotography. Now the first thing that I want to test and measure here is going to be how much heat this camera generates. Now if you watched my video from, I think it was, it was well over a year ago, I compared the Olympus EM-1 Mark III, which is this guy right here, to the EM-1, the very first generation, that's this guy right here. And I found that, like in daytime pictures, you see about a one-stop difference in noise. However, with astrophotography, in the summertime, it was almost three-stop difference. And the reason for that, folks, the reason was because the processor in the EM-1 Mark III was so fast, even faster than the EM-1 Mark II, that it basically kind of gained almost another stop of performance when you were doing very long exposures, you know, exposures that were over a minute long, and especially in the summertime, because in the summertime, you know, heat gets very brutal. And when temperatures are above 20 degrees Celsius, especially in the camera, thermal noise doubles every single degree. Okay, so this, this is important for us. This is why astrophotography cameras are cool. Do you see that they have these big fans on the back of them? And they have these Peltier coolers in them that will actually drop the temperature of the camera, sometimes 45 degrees Celsius. Now, in the old days, okay, the way that I used to measure uh, temperature and everything was I had this, this thermal gun right here this guy right here and I would basically take a reading off the back of the camera I even had like a very specific spot that I aimed and and all that kind of stuff and that's kind of how I used to do it now today I've I figured out and learned a way to open the EXIF data and the cameras and be able to read the actual temperature that's recorded off of the actual sensor itself. Okay, so I can get a very good accurate temperature reading. And I actually kind of noticed the big difference between, uh, actually I think it was the EM-1 Mark II, is when I had an EM-1 Mark II, you know, because it also runs quite a bit cooler than the EM-1, the Mark I. I was at the observatory and there was a friend there, he had his cannon. It was a modified cannon, of course. And I, I took this thermal gun and measured his camera and it was 16 degrees toastier than my EM-1 Mark II was. So yeah, there's a reason why sometimes cameras, it doesn't matter like how old the sensor is, it's like temperature is a big, big factor. Now with the OM-1 here, okay, there's a brand new processor in it. And also, this guy shoots continuous 4K video indefinitely. And what that means, this is what I suspect, is that this camera is going to be a much, much better performer when it comes to staying cool. So the cameras have been out here for quite a bit. We're gonna do this test in two steps. Uh, the first test is going to be done using the batteries that are in each of the cameras, because I know a lot of you will be using these cameras with batteries, and we're gonna see with the batteries being used in the cameras, which one's going to perform the best and which one's going to stay the coolest. And to do the test, basically what we're gonna do is, we'll turn this guy on here. This is the EM-1 Mark III. Let's go to my custom mode three, which I kind of have set up for astrophotography. And let's go up to, I'm hitting buttons here tonight. Actually we wanna go to interval shooting. And we're gonna turn this on. We don't need to take a hundred pictures. Uh, we could, we'll make this just 20 pictures. Five second gap between each one, four second delay. And what we'll do is, right now I've got it set to 180th of a second. Let's go to 30 seconds. So every single one of these guys is gonna be taking a 30 second exposure. There's gonna be five seconds of interval between each and every single shot. And then we'll do about 20 of these pictures. We'll do that with the batteries. Then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna repeat the test 
And this time, I'm going to do it using external power. I'm actually going to remove all the batteries from each of these cameras. And like this is the E1 Mark III with the old DC power plug. I'll actually have this guy running off of an outlet and the same thing with the OM-1, the same thing with the EM-1 Mark one and then we'll do our test there and then we'll hop over to Aztap and basically see which one of these guys is going to be the coolest, which is not a play on words. Just kind of how important coldness is to us. So this contraption right here that you see, this is actually a prototype. It's 3D printed for now, but it's going to be a Peltier cooler, well, two Peltier cooler plates up here, and it will basically attach via the tripod uh, thread underneath to like the back of a camera. And I'm trying to design this thing so that it's going to be work with EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, and the OM1. And maybe even like I might build a cage that will actually go completely around the camera so that it'll kind of double as maybe a video accessory. But those of you who are shooting video, you know, will find this interesting. But, you know, although mainly it's kind of, I'm designing this for myself, astrophotography. Because temperature is, well, like I said, it's really important. It's the biggest type of noise that shows up in long exposures. And when I say the biggest, I mean like 95% of the noise in the image is from thermal heat that's, you know, coming into the sensor. And now we're going to start the test by pressing all at the same time. <laughs> all right, so we have done all my tests and I actually even went back and redid my tests. And I'll tell you why. So I, at first, completely thought that the OM-1 was going to be the coolest camera. In other words, it would have the lowest operating temperatures of all of the Olympus cameras that I've had so far. And I wasn't right on this, okay? <laughs> now, when I was first doing some astrophotography with this a couple times, its operating temperatures were, in fact, lower than the EM-1 Mark III that I had. I don't know why, okay? I haven't been able to replicate, replicate this. And another friend of mine who was in Germany, he did some tests with comparing a bunch of his other cameras, his EM-1 Mark III, his EM-5, all against the OM-1, and he found, like at least in his initial test, that the OM-1 was in fact cooler. So I don't know if it's maybe a setting that I have changed since getting the camera. I, I haven't figured out what it is, but this guy has come in about two degrees warmer than the EM-1 Mark III, which is actually what we're doing the video on right now, okay? Which means that I have to conclude, you know, because this is how I could measure this thing, that the EM-1X right here is in fact the coolest running Olympus camera yet, okay? However, the amount of thermal noise that is generated in the in the, uh, in the sensor or dark current seems to be lower, and I'll do more videos on this soon. But basically, I ran the test, I did them a second time, couldn't believe it. <laughs> Went out, actually did some astrophotography again with the EM-1 Mark III right next to the EM-1 or the OM-1 here. And every single time, you know, the OM-1 was about two or three degrees warmer than the EM-1 Mark III. So right now I have to say that it's not the coolest camera the Olympus has ever made, which is kind of contradictory to everything that I thought because, you know, it's a faster processor. This thing can run indefinitely shooting 4K video without ever overheating. So, you know, why wouldn't it run cooler? There's gotta be a setting somewhere, somehow in something that, that I have set that is making this thing run hotter. Don't know what that is yet. And if I do find out what it is, I will definitely report back. But yeah, that was kind of my results. I know this guy here, when I did the tests in the garage, and here was actually was an interesting thing is that the EM-1, the Mark-1 here, actually did pretty good when I did the tests with the batteries in them, okay? Uh, this guy actually stayed pretty darn stable, and I think I can give that credit to the fact that the battery in the EM-1 Mark-1 is so small. Because it's small, you know, it, it's not generating a lot of heat as the current is drawn from it. And, and this could also be, I know this guy here, I haven't figured out a way yet to run this guy with no battery in it whatsoever, okay? I know you can charge this thing and run it through the USB port, 
But unlike the EM1X here and my EM1 Mark III, which I could hook up through a DC cable, these cameras I could run with no battery whatsoever in them. And that could be one of the things that's at least when they're plugged in causing them to be cooler. Because when they were plugged in, they were about, eh, that, that was when they were two to three degrees cooler than the OM-1. Now when they all had the batteries in them, eh, then it was, a, it was like a one degree difference between the two, the three of them actually, I should say. So this is kind of my first test results here with the OM-1, you know, trying it out for astrophotography. The dynamic range in this camera is definitely better. I'll tell you that right now. That's, that's gonna be something I will explain in a later video. But, you know, I've got lots of other things to talk about, so stay tuned. And hope you're getting some clear skies because I have not had any in like two months now. <laughs>